If you have ever dreamt of having a six-figure income as a freelancer, I'm here to tell you that that is absolutely doable. But there are three key biggest mistakes that I've now seen beginners make that I would love for you to avoid because it's going to take you longer to get to that success that you want to see with your business. So let's get to it. By the way, if you have not seen any of my other videos and we haven't had the opportunity to meet, I'm Karina. I honestly dedicate all of my time to help really awesome women transition from corporate into freelancers and absolutely kill it. Okay, let's get right to it because time of the time is always of the essence here. I like to work backwards sometimes. So today we're going to start with the biggest mistake number three, because it is one of those that I see people make quite a lot. And I want to make sure that you are not one of those people. The third biggest mistake that all beginners seem to make is not having a very clear organizational system that actually works for you. Not every system is going to work for everyone. So we're not going to talk about all of them out there, but here's what works for me really, really well. I have three sort of parts system that I use here. So the, the first part would be to have my Outlook um, calendar coordinated together with my almost like a project plan spreadsheet. I located your link to a free project plan template. They're available everywhere on the net. Honestly, all you have to do is just have a look. But if you want one, there's one at the bottom, so go to the description. Here's how I do this. I love color coordinating because I can see really, really clearly on my agenda and the colors on my Outlook match with my spreadsheet. Okay, so if I'm working with a few different clients, I can tell easily by matching those clients to my spreadsheet and I can see where I am in that project plan. So having an Outlook calendar coordinated by colors and then having those colors match your spreadsheet, okay, your project plan spreadsheet. Here's the other thing um, that I use that is very, that has worked for me really well for many, many years, and that is working backwards. So what does that mean? I start with the end date first, meaning I know when my project is ending or when my delivery date is, and I will work backwards to make sure that I've allocated enough time for that project. Now, on average, my projects will take about two weeks. That's about like 15 solid hours that I need to spend on my project. I will allocate 20. Why? Life gets in the way. I'm a mom. I have two kids, right? My kids will sometimes walk in. They'll completely throw me off my flow. And I know that now through experience that to get back into that flow takes solid 20 minutes. That's 20 minutes. It's completely wasted and I cannot get it back. Okay five hours extra, so now I have 20 hours, I will allocate those hours, you know, how I need to, so that I can then deliver that project on time. And generally what I will do is schedule in my calendar a notification that tells me your project is due in two days. Essentially what I want to do is have my project done about two days prior, and have time, you know, take a mental break, come back to it and see any other things, any other mistakes that I have potentially made and then fix them. Okay, so that would be the third biggest mistake that people make is lack of organization. The second biggest mistake that beginners will make is not having a clear follow-up plan. You're building your clientele here, right? You're a business owner, this is your bread and butter. Clients are your bread and butter. Networking and understanding how to build that clientele base is key. By the way, I actually have a free guide on this in the description below, so go ahead and grab it 100% for free. I talk a lot more about this there. So 
How to develop this follow-up plan? Here's very, very simple. Another spreadsheet, right? Now, you, you know, you can make it easy. You can keep it all in the same place. I actually have my project plan and my follow-up plan all in the same spreadsheet, but if you go to the bottom of my plan, I have little tabs, and under those, I have all of my documents. Fantastic. I will have there some columns, right? So name of the person, uh, you know, a way that I communicate with them, whether that's an email uh, or, you know, messenger, whether it's Facebook messenger, LinkedIn messenger, any other way that you want to include there. And then I have the dates that I followed up with them. Super important. You need to know when you followed up with people. And ideally, you also have a little space there for notes so you can actually keep track of what was said because my friends when gets when you start to get very very busy and you start to have a lot of clients this will be impossible to keep track of and you need to get organized so that you know what was said so that you can reference to that with your client at the next meeting at the next touch point or your next milestone however you want to word that so that's mistake number two, right? Not having a very clear follow-up plan. Okay, let me tell you, um, this will be life-changing when you get this. This is mistake number three that all beginners make. And oh my goodness, stay away from this one. This is, this is so huge, I learned this 20 years ago. The biggest plan, the biggest mistake people make is not um, having a very clear idea of how many hours they spend on a particular project and how to divide their day into one hour blocks. So what people do instead is they will say, oh, well, I've worked 15 hours on this project this week. Okay, but what does that mean? I don't know where your time went, right? You could have spent 10 hours of that scrolling through social media. You could have been, you know, twiddling your thumbs going, well, let me think, how do I wanna go about this? Procrastination is really, it puts a dent in your business. Scrolling through social media is a complete time waster. Here's the fix. If you divide your day into workable one hour blocks, I go even further. I divide it into half an hour blocks. So I know very, very clearly where all my time is going. And let me just say that yes, I will go and scroll through social media also because it's, you know, a little break that I need some time, right? For my brain to just rest from what I'm doing but then I'm very clear as to how much time I'm going to spend on that. Why? Because I get a notification that tells me you've got five minutes and I go, okay, winding down, I've got five minutes to finish this up and get right back into the thing that I was doing. So that's super important. Dividing your day into one hour blocks and making sure that when your brain is most awake, right? When your mind is most awake, that's the time that you should be spending on your project. So I know that for me, that's first thing in the morning. I will allocate that amazing time, the time where my brain is really fresh to all of my clients. Anything after that, I can allocate for the afternoon. Here's what I want you to remember. This is all new habits, right? This is about building new habits that will literally change the way you work and the way you live. Any new habit takes about 21 days to develop. So give yourself time. This is not something that will happen overnight, but if you give yourself 21 days and actually practice this, I guarantee you, you will never go back to the old way and you will see a huge difference in the way you work. Go ahead and check out my next video. I'll see you there.